So the first thing I want to show you da -da -da -da, is the Great Sphinx. This is an immense sculpture that's located in Egypt. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this sculpture, but I want you to get a good look because this part is the head of the sculpture. And you should notice here that in this photo, there's some wood under here. This is called scaffolding. And that's just part of a restoration project. So that's temporary. People are working on that and standing there to uh, fix some of the things that are crumbling away. Now, the Great Sphinx was a piece of art that was created by thousands of workers and the thing that we know is that it was built to honor one of the pharaohs. They think it was probably Pharaoh Khafre, but we're not particularly sure. Um, the other thing you should know is that the head is, of course, the head of a pharaoh, but the body, which we can only see a little bit here, is the body of a giant cat. Cats were very popular in ancient Egypt. So we're gonna focus on that for our artwork today. But first I need to show you some photos of the Great Sphinx that show the entire sculpture so you can see the cat body. Let's take a look. I found a website that has some different photos of the Great Sphinx, so I'll just show you those real quick. You can see in this photo that um, the paws of the cat come out so long um, that they're exaggerated and they're very large. You can also see, if you look carefully, that it looks like maybe a tail uh, curled around back here. Now, do you see how there's all these like ridges that look like steps right there? Those have been worn away after thousands of years of wind and um, weather, like rain and things like that. It wears the rock away. It's made out of limestone. And so when it was originally built, it probably had a more smooth kind of texture on the outside. And then those layers started to develop after erosion happened. All right, here is another photo that shows a pyramid in the background. So that's an important piece of Egyptian art as well. Pyramids were, were used as tombs for the pharaohs or the kings. Um, this is the side view. You can see the nose is missing. And I think what I heard was that some vandals, some people who wanted to have ancient Egyptian um, artifacts had come and chiseled off the nose and took it with them. All right, this is one that's a little further away. You can see the pyramid in the background. You can see the front of the Great Sphinx, and you can see that there are people that come and look at it. So the tourists, like there's a bunch of people standing right here. Tourists can come and see the Great Sphinx. All right, there's another photo there. And this few more, just showing you in some different lighting how that looks. I also heard that it probably used to have a beard, like an Egyptian type beard that would hang down from his chin. I have a video about the Great Sphinx that I am going to link to if you wanna see more about it. All right, now I'm gonna read you a book called Mummy Cat that's going to give us an idea of how mummy or how cats were very important to the ancient Egyptians. This is the cover of the book that I'm gonna to read to you. And before I start reading, I want to encourage you to try to notice a few things as I read this book. On every page, you're going to see these little symbols somewhere in the pictures. These are called hieroglyphs and they are the ancient Egyptian way of writing. So I think those are kind of interesting to look at. The other thing I want you to notice is the special way that the Egyptian artwork shows pattern in like the different colors and the different shapes. 
I want you to look for patterns that would be something that the ancient Egyptians would decorate with. We're gonna use those in our next piece of artwork. All right, here we go. Mummy Cat by Marcus Ewart. The winds hiss over desert sand. The moon shines down on empty land. And long ago, the pharaohs hid their treasures in this pyramid. Deep within this maze of stone, a creature wakes up, all alone. For the first time in a hundred years, he shakes off dust and flicks his ears. From head to tail, dry strips of cloth softly rustle like a moth. A cat who moves without a breath. A mummy cat who's passed through death. And one cold night each century, he gets up and he checks to see if she's come back, his loving friend, so that his lonely time can end. For she was the girl queen, Hatshepsut, and he'd been her hero, not just her pet. The boldest cat ancient Egypt had seen, the number one cat, the cat of the queen. But now, he just feels old and small. He shuffles slowly down the hall. And all around are painted scenes of his past life with Egypt's queen. Mummy Cat purrs to see the smile of the young girl playing by the Nile. Two boats flipped, one boat sank, clawed by the cat on the riverbank. Or this mural of a noontime nap, dreams of mice on the queen's own lap. Their couch was set beside the pool, the shade from date trees kept them cool. Here's Hatshepsut drawing with her palette of inks, and here he is posing, ooh, a miniature sphinx. Marvelous scenes of the way things were when Mummy Cat was alive with her. But the very next picture makes Mummy Cat wail. The queen struck down by a scorpion's tail. Oh, Mummy Cat knows he's not to blame, but he couldn't save her all the same. The scorpion struck both her and him. The poison spread from limb to limb. An end to dances, games, and feasts. Two small bodies wrapped by priests. The paintings stop. <sighs> the cats alone with silence, dust, and dull gray stone. Mummy cat slumps a little more. But up ahead, there is a door. Nothing that matters except for the queen, her face on the coffin, smiling serene. This cold golden coffin, is this all he gets? Where is the girl he can never forget? Will tonight be the night that she comes back? Will the coffin open even a crack? He'll wait, he'll wait, till his friend reappears. The queen of his heart. Look right there. For 3,000 years. The end. 
So here's a picture that shows all of the hieroglyphics that are found in the story and what they mean. So there's a few there that you might recognize from the story. And then I was hoping you would notice some of the decorations or the patterns. So here's some amazing ones right at the top of this page here. You can see that a lot of the Egyptian patterns involved diagonal X type lines and flowers that have really pointy um, petals. There's also a lot of squares with circles and diagonal lines. And the color pattern that I noticed a lot in this book had gold, yellow, orange, and teal, like a light blue color. So um, that was the story of the mummy cat. And we are gonna use the mummy cat story and the idea of the Sphinx to inspire our next art project. All right, make sure you reply on Seesaw that you watched the video and then I will approve it so it disappears off your list. All right, see you next time.